That's really adorable. Back here? Tales of Symphonia. For what could be, could maybe, what perhaps, perchance, mayhaps is the final Tales of Symphonia mainline story thing episode. I don't know that for a fact, but it feels like we're getting really, really close now. Everyone's just had a sort of bit of test of faith of their own, well, of their, of their faith. Feels very much like they're all, they're all at the strongest teamwork power they could possibly have. What is this? And we're gonna go onward into this thing, whatever it is. It looks a lot like the trap that stopped us before. Is the same thing gonna happen? <laughs> this is, this is the Darius emblem. And what is that precisely? Darius emblem? It's a seal that blocks the path to Mythos' castle. Ah, but can we just sort of walk over it? Mythos' castle? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Although I didn't know where it was. Then with this, the trap should be deactivated. Let's keep going. Okay, let's go. What, we're just taking the whole floor? Oh no, it was like on the ground or whatever. An emblem with an intricate gold design. Its use is unknown. I thought you just said it blocks off <laughs> takes off the seal. Never mind. Look at our key item book now. Oh, our books are coming along well. I bet in New Game Plus you keep that progress so you can go get other items and stuff. Very well, so this has got to be Mythos' castle then. So is it going to be a yet another dungeon ahead of us? Oh, I didn't really think it would be. Well, good thing I have all the time in the world. <laughs> I don't have a school schedule at all today. Goodness me. Oh, this is more or less before where we were at, right? These two big swords stuck in the ground, whatever that's about. This is very similar to the area we were at when everyone got whisked away anyway. Uh, in we get to Mythos' castle, which apparently he has. Man, apparently, uh, oh wow, yeah. Apparently Dude Man's Crucius Crystal uh, was something else because he's just sort of still alive and doing stuff. Let's get Darius Emblem. That was quite a trap back there. The Darius Emblem. It stimulated the negative emotions that reside in everyone's hearts. Yes, even knowing what we saw before us was fake, we still couldn't stop ourselves from being affected by it. But we all managed to win against it! Thanks to Lloyd. Lloyd wasn't pulled in by the illusions that the Darius Emblem carry it creates. The Eternal Sword must have amazing power. It's truly fascinating. I don't think that's all it was. I think it was also because Lloyd himself was strong. Yes, you're right. Ah, well, it's good to see everyone's faith and everyone is at peak. What is with all the stuff in this cat? Oh my god, it's gonna be massive, isn't it? Look at all these rooms! No turning back. Man, I was seriously shaking when everyone disappeared. Oh well, at least now we've got the Darius emblem. Now we just need to do something about Mythos and we'll be set. Yeah. It may be difficult, but we cannot back down. Yeah, neither side can back down, and that's why things have wound up like this. We won't get anywhere just thinking about it. We don't have time for that. Yeah, it's okay. I'm okay. Let's go. Okay, time to reclaim the Great Seed. Yes, let's. Are the enemies here the same darkness things they were before? You're in for a dark Sword, Dark Commander. Uh, did we ever find a Dark Commander? I'm not sure we did. Oh, yeah, didn't we see one of these things coming after Regal that one time or something? Oh, I'm not sure. Anyway, we got it. It's fine. We're just going to... What How could this happen? <laughs> I don't know why that really cracks me up, the way they're just like... Well, oh, God, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. That's not fair. All right, that didn't seem to lead us anywhere in particularly special. There's all kinds of weird decals all over the floors and everything. I'm never, I'm not sure what's anything over here. <laughs> Hello. It's nice to meet you. My name's Regal Brian. Dark Spear. I don't believe we fought one of those before either. They all get flunked with relative ease anyway. Um, ah, ooh, treasure. Fun. Is that a, a painting of Zelos as like a mermaid? Blue shield was found. Is that right? It's a very tame description. Blue shield. Oh, wow. That's the shield that's on the, the roulette as, the, as well. Defense 30, uh, evasion 30. How does that shield increase your evasion? Uh, it's got less defense, but that ex whole bunch of extra evasion probably makes it worth it, I'd say. I already forget which room I came in from. <laughs> I think we passed it already. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> this is going to be super confusing, isn't it? How and when, since why? Uh, I guess he built this before already. Well, that looks like a dragon. So we're on this side of the castle. Well, there's a whole lot over on this side of the castle, I, I suppose. I'm probably missing all kinds of treasure chests. I'm so sorry. It's not my intent to just completely waltz by every important item, <laughs> but... There's just, there's a lot to explore here, man. Is this, is this looping? There's no way the castle is actually this big, right? Oh my god. Yeah, it's, it's looping, okay. It's gotta be, because there's, there's just no way. Oh no, it, maybe it wasn't. Oh my god, what the heck? Is this place just huge? Holy balls, what is going on in this, in this castle? This is a very unorthodox castle, I'll have you know, Mythos. Um, wow. Also, what the hell was that? We just walked by? It was at like the front of the screen? That, what is that? 
Oh, and I've gone back to the other side of the... <laughs> I've just gone to the top of both towers. What's here? Oh, uh, hello? Is this anything I should be aware of? No, these aren't this anything special. Oh, that made a treasure chest appear. Whoa, I just did not expect that. Uh, what, pray tell, is in it? Past stone was found. Is that right? Oh my god, I bet there's all kinds of interesting loot in this place. An illusionary uh, stone tablet carved with events from the past. Right. It doesn't tell me what that does precisely. Maybe it's going to be one of them, like, it's going to be like a lock, and we're going to have to find a whole bunch in this place to get to the end. That uh, sounds like something that would make sense. It was not looping. This place is just a very, 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 very big tower. What's through here? Oh, another sort of side library slash treasury room. Elixir, yummy. Ah, this is interesting. Small dining room or something. Uh, in which I do not spy any useful items, unless we want to clonk Mythos over the head with one of these nice looking chairs, which I can't say I do personally. And this was how I got here originally, maybe? And these two are, uh, oh, oh my god. No, this is a different tower then, because the past stone is... Ah, okay, so that's what this decal is about, so we're going to need to put a whole bunch of these down, is that it? What has that done for that? What is what is that? Looks like a teleporter or something, but... Oh, it made a, blo a block appear! Whoa. There is something written here. It says... What can be seen in the past is anger that seeps out from the depths of darkness. What can char this frozen heart is this burning hatred, like the fires of hell. Bring down upon them the lightning of judgment. I can't say I understand particularly what it means. Oh, okay. Wait a moment. Can I read that again, please? Anger seeps out from the depths of darkness. Frozen heart is burning hatred, fires of hell, lightning of judgment. Black then blue then red then yellow? I- but do I just push them onto this thing in that order? Because it went darkness then frozen land then charred heart. Um... I'm sorry. Wait, what am I doing with this? Am I pushing this into the abyss? Or to make a bridge or something? Uh, apparently I am. Uh, grand, grand, good. Blue next then, I suppose. Is there a way to get this wrong? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I guess we're about to find out. So this is just surely just getting me some kind of special extra loot then. I don't actually have to do this because there's a treasure chest at the end of this. And the lightning was the last one, so I guess that's what I put in here. Uh... Do we need to do it on both sides before we get whatever this is, I guess? Maybe this is necessary, then. Well, let's see if I did that, even slightly or remotely right. I guess we'll know if something weird happens here or not. This is what we were looking at before. Um... I'm gonna say that's a good sign! Nope, it showed up back here. That's a bad sign. Maybe I should wait till we've got this other one here. Or should have I perma-screwed that and I shouldn't save now? I'm gonna save anyway. Start exploring on the, on the right side now and see if we can find some similar kind of stone. Ooh, what this? Uh, energy tablets! Yummers! We still never found a vendor that sells them. What a shame. Probably is there, there's an enemy around here. Or maybe not even around here, but just in general that will drop them. They're a very useful item. Especially with how short the item timer is in this game. Wow! <laughs> Look at the purple light streaming in. Oh, that's so cool! It actually, the lighting actually does, like, play onto, like, it, it does actually affect Regal as he walks by. Such a badass detail. Uh, right, I'm gonna check the rest of the, the tower on the east side. I'm going down this time. Oh, there's a chest! Next level four. Don't mind if I do. And since I skipped most of the doors on the way up last time, I'm gonna check them this time. Uh, were we already here, actually? No, we were, like, in a similar room on the other side, I think. Ah, yes, we were, because we haven't had this, uh, spirit bottle. Don't mind if I do. Oh, there's something else behind this. Mortality cloak. This is an appropriate time to fight. Looks like for Genus, um, or I guess for, uh, Regal, but probably better for Genus, because I have a special one on Regal. Not that I suppose either of them are sorted at the moment. So I could get 12 more def uh, defense for losing that 10 intelligence bump. No, I can't because it's only for Regal, actually. And you lose the 10 evasion and accuracy uh, in favor of 21 defense. Sure, go for that. I've been hanging on to the other one for a long time. Uh, so I've just gone past the exit to that bridge now. What more is there? Nothing. So I feel like I've missed something on this side then because we we found this memory, the past stone in one of these rooms in a tower uh, on the other side, did we not? Oh, but then that was only after we fought someone, right? So maybe I should I, I should be fighting people more than I am. I forgot about that. Uh, we didn't spend long in here, did we? What's this room about? I can't say I know. Is there a chest behind this sofa couch thing? Yes, there is. Uh, Prism Guard. Ooh, press against everything, but uh, you're weaker against the darkness. 
I'll take that action. Mythos isn't gonna have darkness spells, is he? He probably is. I can swap it out if I need to. There are a few other rooms down here, though. I'm not sure I was very thorough in checking. Like this one. Uh, well, I checked enough for, to find that chest anyway. Now, there are a few rooms over here I don't believe I checked thoroughly. Or at all! Yoink! Shield ring, uh, like the one we got for Sheena. That would be good for you, Rain. What is up here? This doesn't go out to the staircase, does it? So this is something else. Oh, more rooms! <laughs> Give me demon seal. Oh, sweet! We don't even have to make one! Hot friggity! My gosh, this thing goes all the way around the, the front. I could probably just walk up, waltz up to that front door with the dragon on it and see about fighting there, but oh, this is weird. There's just nothing here. Can I light that torch? Uh, it doesn't appear so. That's just a big waste of time, that is. But I feel like I want to figure out the thing with the blocks first. It doesn't let me reset the blocks, so I suppose there's not a way for me to, like, try this again if I've buggered this. The only one left is the lightning one, so it makes it seem like the, the lightning one, I, I'm still supposed to use it here somehow. You would think that would be to put it in the, the hole there. I guess I can't shove it through the force field. I'm not even allowed to go back until I do push it in here. That's so weird. Just as I expected. Oh, taking that one out did something. Ah. Oh, okay. There's our. There's our. I gotcha. I gotcha. It's got. You gotta take random ones out till it gives you something. I think the way you get there is to go here and then just go swoop around here. And you pull out of that swoop action. Not you. Get a bit of miso stew on that, yummers. Up here. Then out here. Over for Lloyd. Stew. And then through here. Yoink. Give me that. Was it gonna be a future stone? Future stone! Card with events from the future. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I'm sure it's all nightmares. So head over there and the, the future stone will start reacting, right? And it'll be all like, Shoo. The future stone is much like the past stone doing a thing. And will this one also make some funky blocks appear and things will be interesting? Because sometimes lightning is considered a purple color. So what's written here? Will the future be one of a bountiful earth caressed by the blessing of the wind? Uh, will it be of swirling terrible water that washes away all in its path? Is there a ray of light in our future? So maybe yellow is meant to be the light. And you have to... Ah, uh, right, okay. Oh no, maybe white is the light. Well then which one... Which heckin' one is water? Oh, it's over here. Okay, well let me just do a little experiment here. I'm gonna try bringing the water one in first. And if it just spits it out and is like, no, this is wrong, then I'll know that I did the first three on the other side right. Yes, okay, it rejected it, so that I know that that one's wrong now. So the other three I did on the other side were right, then. So maybe I do need these other blocks. So maybe, um, purple is electricity, and yellow is light. Wait, but then which one is, is, is white? I don't know, anyway, let me start with green, because I'm pretty sure that's what Bountiful Earth is. Caressed by the wind and all. Nope, I got it wrong. Oh, maybe yellow is earth. I gotcha, okay, so yellow is earth, then green is wind, then blue is water then white is light, um, and then we bring the purple one over to be thunder on the other side. I understand. The past and the future have to interconnect. This is probably not for something pertinent, but I'm really interested to see what it is now. Womp, womp. Ding, ding. Ah, how cool is that? Now what is it? I wanna see it. I wanna see what the, what the sacred stone. Magnificent. Now what's that about? A sacred stone used to seal evil. Oh, okay, so maybe we did need that. Maybe that opens the door later on or something. I don't rightly know. Yeah, anyway. Also, I've been told that a number of side quests are still open at this point in the game, so uh, we could use a, a similar, a, a near-end game file to do a lot of uh, stuff, I expect. Um, so presumably we've got to beat you up and then use the sacred stone to open that door, maybe? Oh, talk. Uh, maybe, sorry. Forgive me for assuming the violence was the answer. I'm the gatekeeper. You who would open the gate, stand for it and destroy me. Uh, sure. Okay. If you ask for it. <laughs> I agree, this is very abnormal. Uh, oh, it's only got, it's not even got 30,000. We should be fine. Maybe if you didn't have a sacred stone, this would be like wickedly powerful or something. Bonk. Got it. Dragon mail. Oh, don't mind if I do. Bye bye. And Vinheim key was found. Wowie. Ooh, protects against fire. It looks pretty damn strong. Um, not as strong as this one. But I'll give it to you anyway. Wow, you could get all kinds of fire resistance because you have that. It's fire resistant and the, the star helm. And then the the 
kitchen lid shield and then two extra fire things. You'd be absolutely stacked with fire resistance. Uh, the boss opened the, uh, the path to the final area and Darius Carlon. Oh, good. So then we should definitely save kind of thing. Oh my God, there was an angel just kind of chilling in the air there. Mythos 2. In we get. Oh man, I could go for some uh, egg fried rice or something. That's not exactly what this was, but it's... It's like skewers and stuff and he's using egg in it. Well, I guess everyone uses egg in it. Oh, it looks good. I want it right now. Uh, oh, this looks safe and fun. So what was that that dark seal? I have no idea what that was about. Is just ahead. And the great sea should be there too. This is it, everyone. Are you ready? Hey, you know, well, we've been readier. I'm ready. But we saved. I'm prepared to accept whatever happens in the coming battle. And we will win. Yeah. We're gonna win. For Mizuho, Corinne, and for all of you who believed in a coward like me. And for myself, too. I don't want anyone else to make the same mistake I did. No one should have to think that he has to sacrifice his own life. Everyone should be able to live freely, no matter who they are. Humans and elves, and even us. It's okay for us to be here, in this world. Yes. That's why- <laughs> I really thought he was just gonna leave it at that for a moment. And revive the giant tree. Without it, not only will we be unable to restore peace between the different races- But the world will <laughs> turn into dust. The world itself will die. We can't let that happen. We, we are doing two good things here. <laughs> we must reunite the worlds. Afterwards, we shall make a new promise to the new world. The people that I like and the people that I don't both have the right to live in the same world as I do. Right, you are. That's the way things should be. So count me in. I won't run from this one. All right. Let's go. Yes, indeedly. All right, everyone's had their little piece to say. We're doing it now. Now it's for official. It's for super realness. Let's hope I don't make a mockery of this boss fight. Like, I don't just get absolutely shrecked so hard that it's, like, sad. I believe in us somewhat. Warp. I I'm warping now. I am doing the warp. <laughs> maybe that Dark Seal is using some other kind of side quest. Or maybe it's just for the collector's book. Who knows? Or the Sacred Stone, not the Dark Seal. Hey, Mythos. Wow, you have a whole castle here. You made a throne for yourself and stuff. It's a little, it's a little much, buddy. Gotta say. Home. I'm going home. Mythos, listen to me. We don't have to fight. Please return the Great Sea to us so that we can reunite the worlds. Home. I'm going home. I heard you the first time. Something's wrong. He sounds like a puppet. He does, doesn't he? What, what, what is going on here? W what? You're right, Ro. Yeah, that don't look normal. Are we reviving some kind of super ancient thank you for going demon or something like this? To bring me back here. I'm finally myself again. Damn. So that's what this was all about. Mythos, Martell is already dead. That's not true. Martell is alive. Just as I lived on in the Crucius Crystal. Right. Through means we don't fully understand. <laughs> That's not living. That's just existing as a lifeless being. What's wrong with that? What? After all, in our bodies flow the bloods of humans and elves. The bloods of those that despise us. We're better off casting aside such filth and become lifeless beings. That's what you really want? Of course. Watch. When you become a lifeless being, you can even control your appearance and growth. But if you don't have a life, then why would you care about that? <laughs> that's like the definition of an empty gesture at that point. Everyone should become lifeless beings. Plus, that's a really, that's a really lame selling point. Look, I can get shorter. <laughs> Do you like my hair better this way? <laughs> Come on, destroy the world. It'll be a lark. <laughs> I told you before. <laughs> the only way to eliminate discrimination is for everyone to become the same race. Mm, disagree. I've explained my reasons before about why I don't think you're right about that. I don't think I what need to waste the breath here. It's nothing but a dream, Mythos. Discrimination comes from the heart. He's right, Mythos. It's the weakness of people's hearts that causes discrimination. It is learned, not instinctual. Looking down upon others while placing themselves too high. You do the same thing. You look down on humans and elves, treating them like cattle. That's the weakness of your heart. 
nice Even stance. Become lifeless <laughs> nice <laughs> accusational stance, Sheena. Discrimination will continue. Then where should the half elves go? We aren't accepted anywhere. We opened our hearts, but no one took us in. Where should we live? You can live anywhere you like. Don't make me laugh. I'm serious. Anywhere is fine. Probably not here, though. This place looks like it's about to crumble. If you aren't doing anything wrong, you should just live proudly in the open. It's because we couldn't do that. That I... That we wanted a place of our own. I mean, to be, to be fair, Lloyd, while that is what should happen, if someone's being discriminated against, it may not be safe for them to live that way for a extended period of time. I don't agree with <laughs> Mythos's <laughs> strat, pro strat of make everyone the same race, but... And I understand Lloyd is just... He's, you know, he's just trying to talk this very sad man down, but uh, just throwing it out there. Sorry, but don't act like you're the only victim here. It doesn't even come close to justifying all the things that you've done. What you've done caused meaningless suffering and death to countless people. Can you feel their pain? People can change, even if they don't change right away. Months, years, as time passes, change is inevitable. Maybe not everything can be forgiven, but one can try to atone for one's sins. Can't you feel it in your heart? The goddess knows his conscience. Do you think I'm gonna beg for forgiveness? No. <laughs> Ridiculous. There is no goddess. So I will continue to pursue my ideals. Wait, but she wasn't talking about the actual goddess. She was saying the goddess known as conscience. So you don't believe in conscience? I'll give you some unconscience. <laughs> and Mythos is really like taking the master class in missing the point. <laughs> if there is no place where I can live, and if I've been denied my age of lifeless beings, then the only thing left for me is to build a new world on Daris Carlon. A world just for my sister and me. I don't necessarily think- Oh, here's going. He's ignoring me. That's good. All right, we magic lensing you, so time stop. No, I wish you wouldn't. Hey, hey hold on. Before you do, though, let me consider this. You know, an attack. Hey, thank you. Uh, do a bit of that and pyre seal and hopefully a bit of purgatory seal. I didn't see what if you resisted anything. Of course you resisted resist light, so pr uh, purgatory seal is not going to do very much. Except for that first hit. Damn it. <laughs> I, I really should have learned way more uh, units and attacks before this point. Or, you know, just at all. At least I was able to interrupt the time stop with that. Uh, ground dasher, that's fine. It's not going out on me. Beast! You're not gonna stagger, so it's fine. Ow, 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 I wish you wouldn't. i uh, just set my shortcut to Reigns uh, Revitalize. I expect this is not the only phase, though, because it's just doing this music that we've heard before. I'm pretty sure we've heard this music as boss fight before. Indignation! We should all be out of that range, everybody! At least I got out of the range. <laughs> Congrats to me. Uh, sorry, I got confused about which ones I should be pressing. I, I should be mashing Revitalize from Rain and just, uh, you throwing out a lot of beasts on you and or other things. Do another Revitalize if you would, Rain. That one was very useful. I appreciated it tremendously. Ah! Ow! I'm mean. Where am I? Do I have any, um, do I have any, uh, Miracle Waddle? Let me just dwonk that on myself and get my max health back up a bit and also unpoisoned because that was really problematic. No, oh, Sheena can't use skills. That's, I don't like that. Go use some skills, Sheena. And someone should also probably help Lloyd with all that paralysis and everything. Ow. I'm in pain. Ow, I'm in pain. I'm a lemon gel myself. No, someone else should do it. Someone who is not currently occupied. A rain's thing, spells about to come out, but, uh... I might not survive that long. Oh, she's still doing stuff. Um, thanks. I thought I told you to revitalize, but that is also great. Thank you very much, Rain, for that thing that you did. Um, sorry, someone's- no one's healed poor Lloyd's paralysis here. Oh, that's why she hasn't been doing, uh, revitalize, because she keeps getting paralyzed when she tries. Sorry, I should feel, fix you of that as well. My goodness, I'm really being a terrible teammate here. Okay, whatever. Beast again. I gathered that! That doesn't mean... That doesn't justify... It don't justify... I should be doing this way more to keep in combos. Yeah, and what's all this junk about, um, d uh, destroying the world? I thought you said you were just gonna build a special world on Daris Carlon. All right, of course that would mean the world gets destroyed, because then the seed doesn't get replaced. Revitalize is also about to come out and save Sheena here, hopefully. I completely missed that. Everyone ignore me. Please use some more Revitalize if you would, Rain. 
Thank you very much, Rain. And in fact, I'm going to do a bit of this right before uh, everyone gets healed from all this stuff. I'm glad no one got cursed during all that. Um, why am I doing these when those don't do anything? It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm just being an idiot. A miracle bottle uh, rains so like she can do revitalize as, as soon as possible. Ow, ow, ow. Shining blind. Ow, 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 ow. I'm very glad that Rain was out of the way of that. He'd be so kind as to life bottle me. Sweet. Um, oh, I get, get, get away from me. <laughs> Is that what he said? I think it was. I'm going to do this. Only one of those hit range, that's good. I'm just going to life bottle everyone because we've got tons um, and this is almost over. And I've got another unison charged up here. Um, I'm going to do this and then start throwing out some energy tablets. No, don't resurrect now. Oh, God. What are you doing to rain? Uh, oh, I wish you wouldn't. That's really cruel. I'm uh, mean. <laughs> Please don't do that again. All right, I'm going to bring rain back up and I'm going to use energy, energy tablets and then promptly start a new, a little bit of a... Actually, I'm not going to have me do it because I'm running from that. And Sheena's about to do a summon, actually, so I won't do the unison attack till she's done with that. Um, energy tablets, us, Lloyd, while I run from that. She's doing summon Earth. The second after Gnome, I'm going to do my little um, uh, uh, unison attack. Please don't miss. Okay. Uh, and a Pyre Seal. And a whole bit of this from you. And um, I meant to do Ray on from her so that we could do Purgatory Seal, but I didn't end up doing it. It's fine. This is almost... No, don't do that. I didn't hear the first few words of that. It's not over yet. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> that would have been almost disappointing if it was. Oh, okay, now it's just immediately into phase two. Hey, what and why? What the hell is that? <laughs> what? Where did you get a mech? Okay, I could see this being a final phase. This is quite something. Thank you for doing revitalize. Uh, weak t uh, resists um, light and dark, right? Okay, got it. Oh, I'll see about doing a bit more of a uh, devastation. Keep these this block combo going. As many revitalizes as you can pull. Please pull them. I've got you on your casting thing, right? Yeah. This right here is some last boss music. Okay, uh, that's sort of similar. Uh, revitalize is about to come out and be good for me. Uh, got tw 20,000 of the 90,000 health done. Uh, do a bit of more of this. I'm going to do my eternal damnation to do a bit of a double thing here to keep blocking as long as possible. Rain, why are you going close? This, the big bosses have scary things that they can do. Uh, oh man, I don't like that we're so all so close together because bosses like this have that uh, like AOE things that hit everyone. Uh, I'm just going to play as Rain for a second here and have her just run away. I'd really rather not. Um, in fact, I, I might just play as her and just do a bit of revitalize, just spam revitalize so I can be sure that's happening for a moment here. The AI is, like, psychic about when they're about to get hit by stuff, so maybe they're better at blocking stuff than I am. Even though I'm probably uh, smarter in spamming uh, beasts. I'll just play this for a, for a bit. So I can make keep sure, make sure that rain keeps away, because if we get hit with an AoE that hits all four of us at once, we are done. Firelize is almost here. Don't kill Persea before I get a chance. Thank you. Ow. It's okay. Rodeyes will help heal me of that in very soon. Um... My life is, is nigh. You guys are doing great over there. I, I, I very much, I very much. That's going out on me, isn't it? <laughs> Revitalize. Uh, oh, we've got one of those charged. Oh, I'll just do that now, actually. Shwunk. Um, and whoop, and a bit of a whoop, and I'll do this just so that we get the one hit from Purgatory Seal. He's very smiley for someone who's in a giant mech, and we're in the void of middle of nowhere. Oh, this thing doesn't resist light altogether. That's useful. Right, I'm back to playing as Perseid for this bit. Um, hopefully Rain doesn't decide to get too close here. Uh, beast you while you're casting. Wabonk! Judgment doesn't have very high accuracy. Oh, beast again. Ray again. Nice job. That'll keep in place. The shot to do it. It's right here. <sighs> Didn't hear that last bit. Does it? Extra max? Oh, wow. Yikes, to the nth degree. There's no experience or gold, but we got an extra max. What's that about? Let's have some stew. Was that it then? Can we can we relax, please? <laughs> Deep breaths, Mythos. Oh, he's gone. Never mind. I think we hit him too hard, guys. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, he's back. Hey. Um, hello. Are we feeling like relaxing now? Or is the time for that past? Mythos is. It's just like Alicia. Mythos will continue to live as long as the Crucius Crystal exists. So are we just gonna like? Bonk that? Or are we gonna let him live? And eventually, I will be taken over by the crystal. Mythos. Tired of playing your game of good and evil? Hurry up and destroy the crystal. If 
you don't, Terra's car line will continue to drift away. Oh, he wouldn't have told us that if he didn't have some of the goddess of conscience in him. Mythos! Do it now. Or I, too, am no longer myself. Lloyd, please, help him! Let him die while he's still himself! All right. Farewell, my shadow. You who stand at the end of the path I chose not to follow. I wanted my own world, so I don't regret my choice. I would make the same choice all over again. That is your prerogative, little buddy. I will continue to choose this path. Goodbye. I feel like I should have said something before smashing that. Something slightly kinder than nothing, but... I guess it was better to say nothing than to say something stupid. You could have... You could have lived with us in our world. Damn it. Well... Moving swiftly along. Eternal Sword powers... Now hopefully going to reunite things from red and blue back to purple. But that is a raw, raw deal. Because in a way, when you think about it, we sort of sacrifice Mythos for our world's ideal, for our ideals. In, which is a thing that obviously does not resonate with Lloyd in action. In a very unpleasant way. Uh, that's there's a bit of semantic difference between we sacrificed him and he wouldn't stop fighting us but no more what does the new master of the pact ask of this sword can i get a double chili kelp fries with a shake please fix the world restore the true form of our two worlds it's cutscene Ha! <laughs> See, he had his mouth, like, wide open. <laughs> Ugh, don't open your mouth in this void. You're gonna get, like, the magic dust in your mouth. Is this the Tower of Salvation about to repair itself? Both worlds, and they're all gonna merge. Whoa. See, Tails is a stereo. That's so you do a last boss. <laughs> In case you were wondering, that was awesome. I mean, it was a little on the easier side because we were way over leveled, but whatever. It was still cool. I, I dug it. I thought it was awesome. I don't know where he got the mech, but. Who were they? Were they people I should have recognized? I'm gonna have to freeze frame that Wait, in editing. Back? What's going on? Whoa. Oh, I guess the, those were the sylph uh, word that we saw. I, I saw it for a half sec. I thought they were the summon spirits, but then I, I didn't recognize one of them. Alright, the gang's all here. We're all existing in the same world now. How cool is that? There are no more Tethiel and summon spirits and Silveronti summon spirits. You're all just summon spirits now. Makes it easier to say, what doesn't it? Doing? Your wish is granted. Thanks. Cheers. But there is no link. Without a link, the land will die. Hey? Eh? What do you mean? The world was originally separated into two in order to prevent its destruction. If it returns to its true form, the world lacks the mana to support itself. I was under the impression that was chiefly because of all the magic technology. The land is dying. I don't need to know why it's dying. What do we need to do to stop it? Support the two worlds by linking them with a giant tree. Oh yeah, that. Well, we were going to do that already. That's the only way to stop the destruction of the land. We need to awaken the giant Carlin tree. Let's go do that. I get it. Lloyd, hurry! You have to shine the mana of Darius Carlon on the Great Seed before Darius Carlon is too far away. Right, right, right. I, I, gotcha, Skipper. I will do that thing. Uh, sword, right, do the thing that she just said, I'm please. Counting on you, Eternal Sword. Darius Carlon is already at the edge of the gravitational field. Ah, so time is of the essence. Let's stop talking about it, please. Mythos could stop this from happening. Do you still intend to try 
Why, why not? Yeah. <laughs> what could it hurt? Even strengthened by your exvia, it is likely that your body will not withstand the forces. Oh! Are you certain of your decision? Well, uh, no turning back now. I mean, I die because of sword overexertion, or I die because the world is obliterated. I said I'm doing it, so I'm doing it. It's not like we have a choice. Yup. Very well. Didn't realize this required any action on my part, actually. I thought the sword was supposed to do it. But fine, I see how it is. I'll just, I'll, I'll use my, all my precious, precious sweat and tears to fix your silly tree. Ah, and you took my sword too? Ah, man, I was just getting to like that sword. It's not working. The mana's being deflected. The great seed is already dead. Rain? Unicorn horns? Maybe? Can you kickstart what? it with your sphere? Go. Please wake up. Those are angel feathers. Is he gonna get wings? Kick ass. That would make sense because he uh, his gem was one of the first of the Angelus project, right? That's why he's mega powerful and all, because of um, and as as a test subject was. Super weird. <laughs> he's like, what the hell? <laughs> Never mind why it makes sense. It's so cool. Oh, hey, right. You can fly too. Well, this is great. It looks like Darius Carlon stopped moving away. Yeah, but why? The eternal sword is gone. Oh, it's back. Well, sweet. Eternal sword. <laughs> I dig it. Thank goodness. How badass is that? This is my final wish. Eternal sword. Please awaken the great seed. On three. Thank One, two. Please wake up. Please. Rise, giant Carlon tree. It's a heavy sword. I expect it would take two of you to swing it. Hey, Tabitha. What you doing standing in the middle of nowhere? <laughs> Oh, well, they did say something about her being uh, apparently a vessel for Martell, right? So maybe she has something to do with this? She just got et by a flower. Is that the spirit of Martell? This is unconstitutionally cool, though. <laughs> I just feel like I should point that out. This is so freaking dope. Didn't realize Tabitha would play such a big role, but it makes a lot of sense. That wouldn't have been possible if Mythos hadn't shoved her out of the way. Of the rock slide. I don't know why it's stuttering like that. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, that looks like a tree to me. <laughs> she just snaps a leaf off. Oh shit! <laughs> just to like put it back on. <laughs> Hello, it is us. I am Martell, and also the incarnation of the Great Seed itself. What have you done with Tabitha? <laughs> Your hope, as well as those of many others, resurrected me. Oh, badass! I well, she that's great. Mythos' sister? No, Mythos' sister Martell is only one of the many souls within me. Ha! Huh. I am Mana, and I am the giant tree. I am the symbol of the many lives sacrificed to the Great Seed. Oh. I am a new spirit born to accompany the giant tree. You don't need more and sacrifices, do you? Has awakened anew along with me. 
well, that's agreeable. Oh my god, it's growing very, very fast. <laughs> okay, well, we're not going to accidentally break that. That's good to know. That's a job well done right there. <laughs> uh, mission accomplished. It's giant. Oh, it's not there yet? Right this is now, just an illusion? It is only a small seedling. I see. In its current state, the tree will wither and die. Well then, how do we protect it? You must provide the tree with love and adoration. Oh, that's easy. I love as trees. As long as those conditions are met, I shall always protect the seedling. I promise. I 100%. Ever starts to wither. I'll give it snuggles and kisses. Sure. Read it a bedtime story. Then Lloyd, on behalf of all living things, I want you to give this tree a new name as a proof of the pact. Do tell. What? The giant Carlon tree was planted here by the elves when they first came as a guardian to watch over and protect them. This newly reborn tree protects elves, humans, and the lives of all those who are caught in between. Therefore, this tree requires a new name. Jeremy. Lloyd. Pick a name for us. Jeremiah. Okay. Pick a name for everyone's tree. Jerome. So this tree is the link that connects the world. Okay, I got it. This tree's name is... I cannot believe you would do that to me! <laughs> no, are you kidding me? Why? Oh, I thought he was gonna like name it Mythos or something for a minute. Do we ever learn? Do we ever get to know? God, oh, God, oh, damn it! <laughs> Whatever. God, oh, um. That was Tales of Symphonia. That was badass. That was <laughs> the fake wanted, the wanted poster. That was an exceptional game. Um, so I, I mentioned uh, probably for the billion, eight billionth time that I have pl I played the sequel, um, and I've, so I've always been eager to play this one to see where it all came from and all. Um, it utterly lived up to my expectations and exceeded them. This was an, a phenomenal game. I certainly understand why it's like the famous Tales game. Um, I don't know where to start first. I suppose I'll start with the gameplay, though, because that's where most of my gripes are, to be honest. Um, the gameplay of this game, it's got your, you got your linear motion battle system. It's good. It needs free run. <laughs> I feel like I probably mentioned that before. Just the, the main crux of all of my problems with this game's uh, battle system were that, um, oh, genius, um, were that you always, I always felt like I had to, I, because you can't free run, there's and there's there are arena walls. You, there's only like a limited amount of space you can get away from something. So if it's a one v one ever, um, like ever your friends get go down and it's just you, you can't sort of give them the ring around and, and try and think of a way to get your friends back up or, or like take time to do that. You you have about three seconds to step back before you're just blocked by an invisible wall and you just have to mash attack because most of the scary bosses you can't also jump over. I kind of felt like if not free run, then each character would have benefited from at least having, like, Mirage, like uh, Regal has. Some kind of thing so that they could get to the other side of an opponent. Because otherwise it's just like... Like, the worst thing for an action game would be when action can't win you the game anymore, right? Which is what happens when you get blocked between a, a scary enemy and a, uh, a wall. What in the hell are you wearing, Zelos? Um... So that, that was where, like, the, the crux of most of my problems came. That and then, like, you know, so a lot of the bosses, they don't stagger from, like, anything until, like, six hits. And if they can't stagger, they can always be attacking you and they get all these kinds of crazy. It was, like, a little punishing in some ways. But then once you get glory and, like, you know, five levels above, then it was almost a little too easy. I, it was, it was again, one of those things where it's, like, it shouldn't be either too hard or too easy. It feels like there should be more balance. By the end, actually, I sort of felt, like, it sort of balanced a bit. Like, it was still obviously a titch too easy, but I felt like it was approaching an understanding of what would make a boss more, easy, more like, 
fair without being too hard or too difficult. But I think maybe that was just because um, I had glory by that point, and glory made the bosses like really fun <laughs> because instead of having to, especially for a hard hit hitter like uh, Persea, you don't have to be like, all right, I have to buy my time and like dodge for three minutes to like find the one point where I can pinpoint my little three second long beast attack. Whereas um, with Glory, it like it feels like more attacks should have had armor on them so that you could be like, I'm going to lose health here, I get that, but I'm not going to get comboed into Oblivion from max health because that's ridiculous. Um, I can take damage here, like a calculated amount of damage to do damage to them. I don't know. It just felt like at some points, um, and maybe it's just because I wasn't very good at it, like strategy would just kind of like go out the window and it was just kind of like, uh, sucks to suck, you should have had more health going into this fight or whatever. You should have been like five levels higher. Um, in my opinion, that's a point an action game should never reach. Uh, nevertheless, this game's combat was does feel very electric um, and very sort of punchy and extremely satisfying. And beyond uh, the, the, the specifics of combat, even though all the characters felt very fun to play, um, I would say that customization was pretty good. I very much liked um, uh, the titles give you different growths, and uh, I really liked the, ex the EX skills by the end. I might have said um, that I would have liked like a book. There, there were a few th sequences, uh, parts of this game that I felt like were very, very fun mechanics that were made a bit tedious because there was never any like log of them. I think it would be the unison attacks, like the ones that make up a compound special, and the EX skills the compound EX skills. I think there should have been some kind of log of them because otherwise you have to like write them down or look them up and anytime you do that it takes you out of the game and that's just lame. Um, there should have been like a collection book that shows you how many of the total EX compound skills you've found um, to know to which ones you should be experimenting with because otherwise if you don't have the luxury of looking things up like I did you wouldn't have found some of the really cool ones. That made the game really fun. Like, I, I loved Lucky Unison. I loved Glory, obviously. I loved the double jump of, of Regal, even though I never used it. Um, I loved Regal's counter, even though I barely used it. There were plenty of very good ones um, that I felt like a lot of players probably didn't get to experience because it just does It's kind of awkward to, to find them because getting those EX gems, at least earlier on in the game, is not easy. Those things are expensive and rare. So, like, you you uh, you would forgive a player for being like absolutely not wanting to spend them at all to experiment with them, but you you I feel like you should be encouraging them to experiment more with them. Anyway, um, oh, hugsy wugsy, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, but the, yeah, the the X skills were awesome. They were an awesome way to add cust uh, depth depth to the character customization and um, make each character feel distinct. Along with a lot of the really cool um, equipment pieces, like the, um, the, the I, I like the black onyx and the uh, moonstone, and I liked all like the the, the warriors symbol, the, like the ones that where it's like it alter your stats by a bunch because you you lose out on some more interesting stuff that other equipment could give you um, in favor of those. So you're it's still like a trade off, but it it felt like a very cool way to add um, uh, depth to things. Oh, we're back in things and stuff. Yeah, Chosen one. Yay! No, grandmother. I'm not a chosen anymore. I'm just a superhero. Oh, yes. Colette, you have made us all proud. Welcome home, Colette. It's good to be home, father. Are we going to get a little bit from everyone? I see. So, Kratos will travel with Deris Carlon wherever it may go. What? <laughs> He's going to be an astronaut? do? <laughs> go back to Isalia? No. We're going out to visit new lands. Exciting! We're going around the world to try and make it easier for half elves to be accepted. That's a massive undertaking. Like you have a difficult but if anyone could do it, of you. you two we probably are among the people who can do it. Tired. We will always have a home there. I'm sure Dirk would let you crash as well. Hi everyone, I'm back. Sheena, I'm so glad you're safe. Congratulations, Sheena. Wow, you're really changing your tone, everyone, from... I don't <laughs> congratulate yet. How you were when we first went to Mizuho. We have to inform everyone about the revival of the Igigori style. Yes, and for when Kuchinawa returns as well. Which hopefully happens. Yeah, come on, everyone. Let's work as hard as we can. He'll be back someday, unless we move and he just never finds us again. <laughs> Heck yeah! See, look what happened. It's all because the Pope opened up his big <laughs> mouth and tried to banish me and stuff. 
The whole world got messed up. Well then, chosen one, what would you have me do? I'm the Pope we'll now. Emissary of peace to East Salia. <laughs> oh, An emissary. Cool. Who do you plan to send? How about Sheena from Mizuho? She's already involved. So the emissary of death becomes the emissary of. Well, peace. you were the one who contracted her as an like assassin. <laughs> Until you do something about the Church of Martell, I still have the rights of the chosen. Remember? Alicia. I'm finally myself again. Time is finally starting to flow again from that night 16 years ago. Well, that's good. You know what? I'm 28 years old now. Can you believe that? Alicia just comes back from the grave? No! Talking I, ca I can't. <laughs> yes. I just got back from overseeing the destruction of part of the mine. Oh, cool. Now that that's done. We can rest assured that no new X spheres will be excavated. Is it just me, or did we never go into that back part with the retinal what are your scan? Plans now? I'm going to devote the full resources of my company to revitalization projects in order to build a new and better world. Sweet. I'll help too. I'm sure Alicia and Daddy would have wanted me to. A <laughs> sibling owned company. Are you really How about that? Going to Daris, Carlon? If a half elf of Crucius remains here. The other half elves will have no place to live. I'm not sure I agree. As a surviving member of Crucius, I must bear the responsibility. I understand what you mean, but no one has to know you were from Crucius, I'm going I guess. To collect all the X spheres remaining in this land. And I will discard all of Crucius's X spheres into space. I've dragged you into this until the very end. It's okay. It's time for me to go. Please use that sword to send us to Daris Carl. <laughs> he just sends him to Altamira Bye. instead. <laughs> Dad. Don't die before I do, Lloyd. My son. I mean, I'll try, but you're like an angel and stuff. That's going to be difficult. Or unless Lloyd's got some special life extending powers from his x -Fear. I assume he's going to be keeping on using his until he destroys all the other ones. Wow. So now, is it going to be Lloyd and Colette together? Mom, Dad left. That was okay, wasn't it? For me to let him go? It was okay, right? Lloyd, you wanted to go with him, didn't you? No. I have my own path. He's got other stuff to do around and here. Dad has his. And besides, I have a dad here already. They see Two is way too many. <laughs> and I won't see any more. Mom, I'll leave Dad's sword here beside you. Or three parents. Well, I'm off. Buying them all presents for their birthdays? What do you think I'm made of money? She left. Uh, he, he left Flambert's there. Wow! Wow! Look at all the friends we made on our journey. Wow, wow. <laughs> they just give you a little screenshot at the end here. It's like, do you want a new desktop background? We'll leave it here as long as you want. Uh, I think I'm good. Saving game completion data. Yay! Let's make the new game plus. Ooh, clear Darius Carlon and hard puncher. Whatever that means. I guess just for beating it on hard. Let's save our new game plus file. Let's make it something crazy like 47. Yeah. I hope it's marked. I'm going to forget that. <laughs> Slow fade. Any ending with Lloyd and Colette? Or did we or did we already see something that was All right, title screen. Sound test. Ha. Ha. Ta. Ta. <laughs> Great. Okay. Ah, it translated here as what I can do heroic. Well, that's cool. I like this one. <laughs> I love that this one is just called Beat the Angel. This is actually perfect, because I, I usually like to talk about the music in these games, and then I have to like go find it and everything. Uh, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. So that was great. Uh, where, where were we? I was talking about this uh, battle. I think I was almost done talking about all the battle stuff. Um, yeah, there's they, they reward you well enough with explore, exploration, give you new equipment and stuff, and that's cool. I liked the customization stuff, like uh, as in um, the custom shops where you could get materials. I think I might have done... I very often felt like the weapons you could get in customization shops very like very soon after showed up in stores to the point where it was not worth gathering the requisite materials a lot of the time. So to put more balance in that, I would have either made it so that like the weapons you can customize are like from three stores ahead 
or made the materials easier to find or something like that. I don't know. But that's enough about... I've talked enough about the, the battle and gameplay and stuff in general. Let me find a better... Yay, the Sea Voyage theme, because we never played this one. Uh, let me just talk briefly about the visuals and all that before I get into the story, because the story is probably going to be the longest thing... The thing I talk about for the longest amount of time. Um, I like the visuals in this game a lot. Um, it's obviously quite a... a like, they, they, they changed the style quite a bit in further entry... In future entries. Future entries, it's a little more... Um, I don't want to say realistically proportioned because it's anime, so it's never going to be that. But things are, they're almost like a little closer to chibi style here or whatever. And I don't know that it really knows to that much. Like it was, it looks good anyway. It's, it's a good looking game even after, after all this time. I think this, this, they didn't change too much of the visuals from uh, the, the GameCube and PlayStation versions here. Her hat. I think they redid a bunch of the UI, maybe. But it's cool, and, and the the visual effects of like the spells and all that are awesome, and uh, and the, just like the and and the punchiness of the sound effects. The whole presentation is very is very uh, likable during the battles and other parts of the game. In this port, uh, the sound cuts out here and there, which I, was weird, but I didn't I didn't really ruin the experience for me. And now and again, there were some weird like sort of sound quality issues, like some sounds sounded a little less lower quality. I assume just because I had to fit it all on two GameCube discs. The music was obviously amazing. Uh, so many uh, good tunes. Hang on, I gotta see. Oh yeah, oh, Dirk, I'm home. The theme of the Dirk's place is really nice. Um, the Acelia theme is good. Hang on, let's let's find some battle themes. All of the battle themes were good. Um, the fighting of the spirit was obviously the best one. Wow, now, now. It's just very good. This theme is uh, what haunts my nightmares. And this one's dope. <laughs> I feel like I've expressed that this one's dope. So this uh, silver one's all right. It's a little more basic, you know, but it's a good theme. Why isn't law capitalized? No one cares. Oh yeah, it's weird. I, I never remember like half of these boss fights themes. And I'm like, what is that? And it plays. I'm like, oh, I guess that did happen. And this one too. Dwarven vow number seven. Nobody knows. <laughs> Have a sweat dream. Bum, 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 ba, da, da. This game has good happy music too. One thing that I, I will say, um, when I'm aside from my jam session here, is that this game has very good. Oh no! Don't play the casino theme. The Grudge. It's a great movie. I, I don't, can't, I'm not sure if I've actually seen it. Oh yeah, this theme, God. What I was gonna say is this game has, it does a great thing of um, balancing or, or having different versions of a theme. Oh, I love Shining Dew as well. This game plays a lot in the sequel and it's good. Having two different versions of a song that have different moods, but like the same uh, theme. Oh, and I like this one too. This one is so sweet. I just want to see if I can find a few examples of what I'm talking about. Lewin and Colette's theme come to mind. Oh, all, the, all the personal character themes are really good actually. Regals was good. I think Sheena's is maybe my favorite. Oh, and Perseus is very, very sad <laughs> because Perseus is very, very sad. There's the serious mix of Zellos, but then there's the. Sheena's is badass. And I had a lot of time to listen to it. With the Kujinawa fight. I'm butchered that horribly. Uh, Rain's theme, of course. I barely remember Genus' theme playing ever. Yeah, so there's there's like the really poppy, goofy version of Colette's theme. 
<laughs> Still, that's one of my favorite moments in the whole game. Is in at the tree at ruins where she puts her hand on the thing and it opens and she's like, Oh my god, guys, you know what this means? I really am the chosen! I'll let the thumb goes down. Okay, fine. It was a secret entrance. Wow. I guess I'm really the chosen after all. Yeah, there wasn't doubt. Everyone's just like, yes. <laughs> yes, we know. Bum bum this seems really nice in the sequel as well. And then there's the sad version. Oh, and Lloyd's theme as well. Lloyd's theme ended up being one of my favorites by the end. It's just so hopeful and, and optimistic and bright and spirited. Much like the lad himself. And so there's like the default version of it, which is this sort of chivalrous, righteous sounding uh, little theme. And then there's the Ocarina version, which is for like sort of more somber moments where he's being, you know, just very Lloyd like and sweet and kind. But it's still the same theme and all. And there's, uh, if I can find the Lewin theme. There's the version when it's all destroyed and the version when it's sort of fixed up again. And they're both kind of somber, but there's one that's obviously very much more sad. <laughs> this one, the Colette theme, well, the Colette theme doesn't change a lot, but it, it gets new instruments in the sequel and it's very, very good. And this theme changes quite a bit in the sequel and I like the, the, the remix of that one as well. Oh, and Altamira as well. It's so sweet. Or uh, Flanmore, rather, sorry. Oh, and uh, Altessa's little place. I'm not sure what it means by Anchorette. <laughs> Maybe that was Altessa's Japanese name or something. Oh, and then the Ozette theme. Wow. This game has so much moody music, too. Yeah, so this is this is the destroyed version of Luin. Versus the the more built up version. This song in particular holds a lot of nostalgia for me because it's the first town you go to in the sequel, which is my first Tales game. And also one of my first games, really. Go oh, on, Bubble Costa 2. Dun, dun, that is very destroyed, that town right now. I think we are never going to be allowed there again, probably. <laughs> we got, we let that town get heckin' blown up. Anyway, sorry, I've talked a lot about the music now. Oh yeah, it's got a little star, so we know it's New Game Plus. Oh, is it New Game Plus, or is it just going to be, like, from the end? Congratulations on completing the game. You can now begin a new game with a variety of special features by using your grade from your completed game. I didn't have enough grade. <laughs> or grade carries over in the next game. Oh, I didn't have any grade by the end. Oh, 1222. Or is that all the grades you earned in the entire thing? Oh my god. Oh my god. 10 times XP. For players one of the game at a low level. Set regular earned XP value to 1 and increase combo bonus. Oh, weird. So now instead of getting... You, you get more XP only by combos and by nothing else? Wow. Start the game with minimum HP. Start the game with maximum HP for all characters. Increase by 500. Wow, this is so cool. Inherit data from the mini games. Possess up to 30 of each item. Oh my god. Inherit the current collection. Collector's book would be a, a one we want to do for sure. Let's just load a file from like way over here. This is before everything was all purple, isn't it? Sure. Like Flanar. Let's hang out in Flanar. And I should probably put on slightly warmer clothes. Actually, let's swap to Colette. All right, so I've talked a lot about the, the battle. A lot, I've talked a lot about the visuals and the music. <laughs> probably too much about the music. Now we've get into the, the real thick stuff, the story. I adored it. I did think the game uh, stretched on a bit. I, th I thought it was a bit long, um, but I, I'm kind of okay with that because what it meant was that every character got a very satisfying arc, at least in my opinion. I was uh, sor sort of feeling like th around the middle point of the game, I didn't really get Zelos' character. And that was definitely resolved by the end uh, when it was revealed that he was, uh, you know, working with the opposition the whole time and all. It made so much of his stuff make sense and made uh, his his conflict make sense. Because I was like, why does he have some, all this self-doubt about Because he's all like, oh, I'm not fit to be the chosen. <laughs> Celis should be because she's a, a much better person than I am. And, everyone, and it's just like, okay, we get your like obnoxious 
harlot, but <laughs> you're, you're, you're a bit much, man. You're still helping us out and all. We don't know. No one hates you as much as you think they do. And then when, it, when uh, all that stuff happened, I was like, oh, okay. You know what? It makes sense that he had those views of himself. But then he gets his value back anyway, or, it, you know, he perceives his value again anyway, because uh, in part due to Lloyd's influence. It's obviously a lovely tale of tolerance and and just compassion and all that um and in in a very good way but it's also very real in many ways in all the in addition to all the ways it isn't case in point one of our main plot points is we have existing racial tensions heightened by uh, a world crisis and i think it's very telling it's a testament to this game's uh brilliance as a story that it came out 2003 is that right so it's about 20 years later maybe 19. Can anyone think of a recent world crisis <laughs> that heightened existing prejudices? Just in the past two or three years or so, anything come to mind? Unpleasant as it is, it proves that it's not new and it's not a, it's not simple either. Um, and I, I did, uh, this game does take a very nuanced approach to a, a lot of those themes. There were a lot of characters from, that I, that I knew from the sequel, because the sequel doesn't do much to expand upon the characters that are already here, really. It focuses a lot more on the new characters, which isn't bad, it's just that they should have been in a different game, because they're lovely characters and I like their story a lot, it just has not tons to do with this. And I think Genus and Sheena were definitely two characters that I didn't, fully get in the sequel and like now that i played this game i'm like i get who those people are i totally and, and they ended up being one of my favorites sheena ended up being a big favorite i, I don't know I, it's, I think sheena or genus were probably one of my favorite probably my favorite the characters with the favorite arc by the end of it i did i really liked sheena's because she kind of has like a little double hump arc like they all go through a, numerous changes but she starts out being this sort of like it's kind of like she's desperate to fit in so because she's made all those mistakes in the past so so she goes along with this this plan. She's gonna be an assassin and she's gonna go save the world and, and all that. She's gonna murder that that bratty 16-year-old in the other world who's trying to ruin things. And you get this like startling image of this this poor and she's a 19-year-old. She's she's not a, a like a jaded, super hyper experienced like warrior or anything like that. This this sort of unprepared individual venturing into a world they've never seen for the approval of some people who hate her. And it's just like that's such a that's such a crazy image. Um, and then she comes back and, and then having, and then they're all like, <laughs> you fucked it up. Instead of being like, that was so brave of you to run to this other world and like fight through monsters and all this stuff to get there. And it's like, what the hell? And then even, and then she kind of gets to the, to, to Volt and she, and she gets overcome by her fear. And then Corinne sacrifice, um, sort of snaps her out of it. And she's like, oh, I can do this. And then she, but when she does it, it's kind of like, all right, I've, I've taken care of that, that part of like my past, but it doesn't obviously then bring all those people back and people are like still resentful for her over it. So then she has this crisis of like, I did the thing that's been plaguing me 12 years. Now who am I? <laughs> now what is my personality about? And I think her becoming chief is, is like the best way for that to end really, because then it's, it's the biggest gesture she can possibly make in her life to be like, not only have I moved past those, the, the things that I, uh, the mistakes that I made, which again, she was seven, so what the hell? I'm gonna make them even better, and like, and 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 put bring my scope beyond just the people of my village and what will make them happy and what will make them like me, and and turn it to the whole world. And they all they all kind of have a bit of a broadening of the perspectives, and, and they all have a very satisfying arc as well. Um, but what I was talking about with Genus, I like very much that even to the end, he doesn't he, he doesn't ever have a point where he's because like at the beginning of the game, he's like, yeah, I hate humans. Humans are garbage. They all hate me for no reason. And when I started this game, I kind of had the, uh, the opinion by the, that by the end, he would be all, I take it back. I <laughs> I was wrong to say that. And he doesn't, he, he kind of is like, me hating them just makes them hate me more and it's and it doesn't help. But he, he's, he still does by the end say, I hate humans. And I, I like I like it because, well, first of all, because he's, he's a he's a smart individual and you can tell he he's thinking about it as he's saying it. He's not just, it's not like impulsive. I like it because especially with the theme that Lloyd says of like, not everything is necessarily needs to be forgiven or can be forgiven. That genus doesn't say I, I forgive all those people because I, my eyes have been opened or whatever. Because those people were like genuinely horrible to him. And he he's just like, no, I hate them. They're stupid. <laughs> they shouldn't have done and said those things. Like there might not be a way to fix the lifetime of abuse I've suffered. Um, and I, I like that not because I think it makes him into some kind of like scheming little villain who's trying to perpetuate cycles of hate, because that's obviously not who he is. But because it realizes that being the, the good guy doesn't mean forgiving an aggressor, I guess. Um, it's a bit of a reductionist way to put it, but I, I think you maybe see what I'm getting at. It doesn't mean he's going to go, you know, <laughs> murdering a humans for the sake of it, but the point is that actions have consequences and, and lasting effects, especially on a, a young mind like his. It's complex, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is stopping hatred starts with stopping hatred, but it doesn't start with 
telling the victims to stop <laughs> hating their aggressors. And I think that's like a point this game uh, tackles very well. In broad strokes, uh, at the beginning, I had a bit of, um, I, I, I guess at, earlier on, uh, because at the, the, your, 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 the game does a good job of expanding your, your view of the whole world um, over time. You don't even know really about Tatheola until a fair bit through. So at the, at the beginning, it's just like, you're going on a journey for your, it's like, you're, you're here in your hometown. Here's your friend, Colette. She's got a job to do. You're going to help her. She's going around to get these seals. It's like, okay, there are these seals that are around the world. They will help prevent the greater energy crisis. Now you're like, okay, I've got an idea of what Silveron is and why this is all about this. And then it goes beyond that. And it's and you're starting to see the seeds of like half-elf discrimination and stuff. That That's pretty frequent. And so you're, you're like, I have an idea of like the, the socio-sphere of this world. And then it's like, boom, other world that was connected to this one at some point. And it was split apart by an ancient war. And a lot of those cultures are still sort of filtering through and those prejudices remain. And the energy crisis is actually a dual energy crisis that goes on both sides. And the one perpetuating it was not originally trying to perpetuate an energy crisis, but trying to prevent one, but now has created a hierarchy <laughs> of people trying to reverse racism, all the humans and elves out of existence, of which there's a subsidiary that's actually resisting cruises and <laughs> like a twist. And, and at first I was like, when it started bringing all the, the renegades into it as this separate organization, I was like, this is a bit much, but it serves a few purposes. For one thing, I think it's, um, it, I, I think the, the simplest way it, purpose it serves is showing that discrimination and layers uh, upon d layers of discrimination and intersectionality originate from vast structures and are therefore not easily uprooted. But beyond that, as a framing device, it allows for uh, Ewan and his crew to be uh, going about his, um, the, the process of trying to stop Mythos in a separate way than Lloyd and Co, uh, Co which granted while extreme is, um, definitely very precise and effective. Ewan very frequently has the right idea and just does it like with with like a hint too much murder. <laughs> and but usually he would he would he would be there to bust you out in the end and then be like, "All right, I'm going to have to kill you now." And then maybe I sh wait, hang on. Maybe I can use you. Hang on, come with me. Can you open this door for me? Great. I'm going to have to kill you now. Hold on, wait. Maybe you can manage this. Do I trust you? No, I'm going to have to kill you now. <laughs> but it was great. Um and I liked Carlos uh, to that effect as well. I like the, the way they set up his uh, parental bond with Lloyd. It's it's very clear um, from the beginning. Not not clear as in what was the point of the twist? You could all see it coming, but as in, I he behaved in a realistic way considering the circumstance. I think, and I loved Lloyd's obliviousness to it as well. Lloyd as a protagonist was awesome. I like um I, I like his straightforwardness and his uh, shamelessness in his in his compassion. I love that he's just a moron at times where he really needs to not be, but like in a really good way, in a very, very amusing way. And I like that he's, uh, even though he's he's like just this sheer force of will who will not stop moving forward no matter what, he gets confused and he he's in, he can be impressionable sometimes, I think. People tell him stuff and he's kind of like, well, oh, great, I'll, oh, that's, that's another way, I'll go do that. And then uh, he stops halfway and he's like, well, <laughs> there are people who will die if I do things this way. Well, this might mean losing my friend, but he's, he just keeps moving forward. And I think that's a very... Uh, Aside from an admirable quality, it's an interesting quality to see play out in a story. Because it does get them into trouble quite a, a lot, and um, by the end, he's racked up this, like, absolute mound of sacrifices on his back that he's like, okay, well, I'm, I've gone this far, so I just have to... I, the, the thing that he keeps... The, the, the point that keeps coming up, that there is no use in giving up just because forgiveness seems uh, too far away, because forgiveness shouldn't be your only motivation, because it won't always be there. There is a lot to talk about with the story, um, and I, I'm sure I'm going... I'm, I'm missing the odd thing. Well, many odd things. There's just... A, there's a lot, and it was... It was a really... It was really good. From, um... Symphonia 2, Colette and Regal were kind of like my my top two. They were like my favorite characters. It wasn't that I disliked them here. I liked them a lot here as well. Again, I was I was surprised that everyone felt like they had a, a an arc that made sense by the end. Because usually in a, an RPG, especially with an RPG of nine heroes, there's one or two of them where it's like, all right, they rushed that. Or like, I don't really get what your thing was. I think I said this at the end of Zysteria, that there were one or two characters in that where I was like, I don't really get what your thing is. <laughs> I like you. You're cool. But I didn't get what your, what the point of you in the story was, aside from being cool and, and throwing laser beams out of your eyes. Whereas here, I felt like all nine members of the of the company had a had a purpose. And beyond that, um, this game, uh, which thus far my experience with the Tales games, which is minute, it's this game, Symphonia Two, Zillia, and Zisteria. Usually, the villains are not quite the center of. They're not where the, the most of the writing effort is put in, at least in the other ones I played. Zillia, the villains, the villains kind of like get swapped around and they sort of show up later. Zysteria, they give you a lot on the villain, but it's a little. It wasn't bad, but it was. It's it, it gets it's clearly very tokenistic in some parts. And and Symphonia too. 
I'm trying to even like remember the villains. They're 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 like iconic, but they're not very. Some of the villains in Symphonia 2 are good. I felt like this has the this had the the best pantheon of villains I'd seen in any Tales game to date. Obviously, a lot of the the, the um, cardinals were kind of like lame throwaway villains, like Rodal and whatever. But Mythos, um, Ewan and Kratos had sort of a villainy role, and they were very interesting. Mythos in particular, though, was a very interesting villain and a very uh, a likable villain in a way. Not necessarily that I, I was like, yeah, we get great, we get on great, we should we should go out for coffee. But like, beyond being a villain I could understand, he was a villain where his circumstance made sense to me. And it fit with the world as well. I almost wish they brought him into it a little earlier, to be honest. And, and uh, b that besides um, brought in the, the like... The, the the fake ver the younger version of himself to meet and with Genus and become friends and stuff because that that you when you meet him there are only like three hours in between you meet him and and when he betrays you then and I kind of felt like that would have that would have hit even harder if Genus had had more time to build a real uh, rapport with him but it's sort of an empty complaint because I still felt like he was very fleshed out and good villain I think that was most of what I wanted to cover with the story it was really good and I just love all the characters they're just so very sweet Colette is just such such a lovable character I loved about Colette and Lloyd that they. They're, they're like, they're the childhood friends trope, but they're both just like such dorks. I love Lloyd's obliviousness. I love Colette's just like uh, unwarranted optimism. Like when Sheena tries to kill her, she's like, oh, I, just, I know you're like an assassin, but like, could, could we, we could still be like friends, right? And she was like, no, <laughs> that obviously cannot happen. I love, I, I love Genus's cynical side. Like when he just, when he just wants to like <laughs> rip someone to shreds, he just has no mercy, especially when it comes to Lloyd. But I also, I, I'm also quite fond of the bit <laughs> in the casino where Zelos is, is being all pervy on Rain and Genus <laughs> just turns to him and is like, I will light you on fire. I really liked Rain as the voice of reason who is like, who regrets having to be so stern, but someone's got to do it because the rest of them are just so sort of, um, in the politest way, kind of starry-eyed and idealistic. I, f I found myself identifying the most with Lloyd, Colette, and Genus in, in the earlier parts of the game, but I recognized that Rain was, was, had to balance it out, really, otherwise there's a lot of stuff we wouldn't gotten done, probably. And I like that you also could sort of theoretically pull, that, that, sh that whole thing with the ruins, and it ended up being because she knew she had gotten sort of abandoned, like, shunted through this portal, in some ancient ruins, and that's sort of why where she got her uh, fascination with it, because she's just been trying to get back there this whole time. And that she's really got these, like, dense abandonment issues, which you could then theorize as her explaining why she does, uh, why she feels that she can take on the role, role of this sort of cold, distant authority figure. And I, she, you know, for reasons I've already explained, I, I loved Sheena's arc. Um, I like Sheena's... Uh, they mentioned once or twice that she's kind of similar to Lloyd, and I, I kind of, I, I see what they mean. She feels like a little more stable and mature than Lloyd, maybe, but she, she grapples with the same sort of impulsivity and like, I gotta just do, like, I gotta do something to fix things, and I'll just keep going until I'm, I stop, basically. She felt like one of the bravest, like most courageous characters by the end. I really liked it. And three left, I have to talk about. I, I did, I love, I did as much as Zealous was uh, gratingly, let's not mince words, pervy. I found it, him very funny uh, many times. I loved his casual tone in the face of utter and complete ruin. He would just be like, oh, shit, well, that's not good. <laughs> like, when stuff would be catching fire. Persea was obviously super, super cool. I like, I, I did like, it, it, it's another one of those stories where you kind of think you see where it's going and it doesn't necessarily go there. Like, at first it's like, okay, it's gonna be like a robot feels emotions again kind of story with her because she's been soulless for 16 years. But then it ended up being this thing of like, it was, it was a weird uh, arc she had with this, her whole lost time thing. And in a way, it kind of reminded me of Genus because it's like, it's it's like I can't the, the the years of my life up to this point have been lived in an un like an un a not good environment where I've been sort of used and and mistreated and I can't get those years back and then it becomes this existential crisis of like I now I'm not even I'm not even aging in like a proper way am I really just this this like loose bit of consciousness cast off on the edge of society and then her getting that back in realizing that she can feel pain and, and anger over those events and still move forward and and and, and Again, in, in kind of in the same way to Genus, they parallel each other a bit like that. And I guess it's not a bad, bad time to mention that Genus's crush on her was really funny. It was one of those things where it's like you take a character who's normally just so very able and confident in their speech, and he just breaks down. Um, and lastly, of course, Regal. The whole thing with Alicia and um, and it being something that was just completely not his fault, but he still feels penitent anyway. 
But then he mistakes punishment for doing the right thing moving forward. And is just like, yeah, see, I'm, a, I'm wearing prisoner outfit. I was in prison. I have handcuffs. See, I'm totally making up for all for that murder I did. <laughs> I feel really bad about it, man. So I've talked for too long about the characters now. Uh, is just there anything else I want to bring up? I don't know. It was really good. There was some really dope ass music. There were some really dope ass story moments. The hand animated cutscenes were really nice looking. It's just a great story with some great characters, man. And and relevant, as I said. So worth it's worth attention for that alone. So moving forward with this game in the future, um, there's a lot of stuff that I, uh, I, I did not see. And I, my hope would be to get all the achievements, which I guess means I have to beat it on Mania at some point, which whatever. I guess I can beat it on Mania New Game Plus, right? Like I can do like all kinds of like 10 times XP stuff and it'll be great. Was that great at the end? Was that my, my current grade at that point? It must have been because I, I definitely had more grade than that earned overall. So if I could just earn a whole bunch of grade really fast to get up to 3000 and then go do that last boss again, I can do a new game plus file with all kinds of extra XP and stuff. And we can go and do some other side events and stuff. And I might even um, just look up certain scenes online in the future during our EX playthrough, because there are plenty of scenes that are different depending on your uh, affection with each character. And I'd like to see, I'd certainly like to see a few of them. I might even just watch all of them. And when I do that, I'll probably do sort of a reaction of, of it. Um, because it is part of the game in a sense. But that's when we do our EX playthrough anyway. Also, the Japanese version of the skits are voiced, so I, it would be fun to, to listen to a few of them just to hear certain moments, even if I don't understand Japanese. <laughs> However, the EX playthrough uh, is not starting right away. It'll start whenever... So in the future for polls, <laughs> we've got so many games to play. So what I'm, I'm doing is I'm either... Whenever I do a poll of what game we're playing next, it's either going to be a, a non-series game or a series we haven't started yet, a poll on five of those games, or it'll be a poll to do a game from a series we have covered already, and then depending on which game, uh, series wins, I do another poll to decide what game. So so it'll be like, is, are we going to play uh, another game from the Mario series yet next, or the Zelda series next, or the Tales series, or the Fire Emblem, or whatever? Which series are we dipping into next? And then if, if Tales gets voted on um, Symphonia EX playthrough, the EX playthrough of Tales of Symphonia, will probably be one of the selections for that Tales vote. I hope I made that somewhat understandable, that... Uh, explanation. The, the long and short of it is, if you want to see the, the EX playthrough, next time there's a vote with Tails in it, vote Tails, and the next time we get a, a vote of which Tails game to play next, pick Symphonia EX. And with that, it seems like a good time to bring up our new updated schedule! With Tales of Symphonia complete, well done us, the schedule now goes Kingdom Hearts, Resident Evil, Kingdom Hearts, Dual Destinies. So we've already started um, Dual Destinies and we're well into Resident Evil. It'd probably be the next game we beat, and now Kingdom Hearts will occupy our double slot, because it is the third game we are currently playing, and it is a JRPG, so it's going to be long. Not as long as this, I don't think. <laughs> so I can't wait to start that. That'll be the next video going up at the channel, I believe, will be us starting uh, Kingdom Hearts Part 1. That won't that be exciting. And we're already a bit of the way into Dual Destinies, and as I said, a fair bit of the way through Resident Evil, but don't go anywhere after that, and be ready, kids, because the next game we'll be starting on the channel, after one of those games is finished, is SpongeBob SquarePants Movie Game. Which I'm elated about because it won, it won. I was surprised it won the poll, but um, it was one of the two. It, it tied for first place with uh, Yume Nikki, which we're going to be doing after SpongeBob. But never mind about that. I was surprised and elated because it's a game I played before, but it's very good. <laughs> it's an awesome platformer, so I can't wait for that. The SpongeBob games have no like. There are a lot of SpongeBob games, and they're almost all really good. They have no right to be as good as they are. No right, I say. And with that, I suppose there isn't much more to speak on. I believe that means that our time with this playthrough has is at an end. Uh, what a sad day. But also a happy day, because it's great, and I'm glad I got to finish it. So, Colette and I, and, you know, the others too, we'll see you again in this game in the X playthrough whenever we end up doing that. Could be years away, could be a week away, I don't know. Probably not a week away. <laughs> no, not a week away. <laughs> and hopefully, I'll see you at some point in Dawn of the New World as well, and any other old games we happen to be playing on the channel. I'm glad you came along. Wouldn't be a journey without you. And may we all strive to have hearts as big and full as Lloyd and crew. Thank you so very much for coming around to Tales of Symphonia. Hopefully I will see you around. Admiral's gonna be out of here now. Peace! Bye! Goodbye! Bye-bye! See you! Bombing photo added to the court record. I need to have a look at this. I see. All right, then, Mr. White, you may cross it. Mr. White? Miss, sorry. Wrong crime. We're not cooking meth on the side, are you, Phoenix Wright? All right, then, Mr. White, you may cross examine the witness. I'd like to have a look at this photograph. Right, look at